It's been a while since I made any video on Spring Boot and its new features. Recently, I came across a feature called Graceful Shutdown. Using a configuration, you can configure the grace period when a Spring Boot application is going down. In this video, let's take a look at how you can leverage this configuration and additionally, how can we handle exception scenarios when you have any threads which are live inside a Spring Boot application. As usual, I'm going to start with start.spring.io. I'm going to use a Maven project with the latest version of Spring Boot. Let's configure the artifact as com tech primers. I'm going to call this as a graceful shutdown hyphen example. I'm going to use the Java 11 version. You can either use 8 or 11 or 14. I already have Java 11 installed in my laptop. So I'm going to use the same Java 11 version. I'm going to add some dependencies. I am just going to add only the spring web so that I can trigger a rest endpoint and imagine that the rest endpoint is going to take more than 10 seconds or something. And we can configure the graceful period timeout as 30 seconds and we can see how the JVM is going to respond and how you can configure it in a best possible way. So I'm just going to unzip the project and open it in IntelliJ. So the project got loaded. Let me open. There is nothing else. It's just a plain vanilla Spring Boot project, which we all know. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this particular project with the graceful time period. So there is server dot shutdown dot grace period. I'm going to configure it as let's say 25 seconds. Right. Let me go to the web page and then see what is it? Grace Haven period and it is 25 seconds, right? By default, you can have 30 seconds. I'm just going to modify it to 25 so that you can see that we can modify it to a custom value. So meanwhile, I'm going to create a rest endpoint class. Let's call it as user controller like we all do always. I'm just going to return. I'm just going to create a get mapping to just say hello instead of user. I'll just say hello and we need to get the hello world message. So this is a classic hello world example. However, I want to mimic the concept of the shutdown, right? So the shutdown grace period is going to be 25 seconds. Imagine this particular program taking, let's say more than 10 seconds. So I'm going to add some thread dot sleep here. So that way this resembles like a business processing rest endpoint, which is taking, let's say 10 seconds to process a message and then return back. Or let's reduce it to five seconds for simplicity. So this particular rest endpoint is going to take five seconds and then it's going to respond. So generally what happens when you trigger a request this is just going to wait. The JVM is going to take five seconds to process this particular response and then send a message back. Meanwhile, if somebody shuts down the JVM, what generally happens if it gets abruptly killed, the request also gets killed. The request will be returned with an exception saying you did not get the response or the server side closed the connection, etc. However, using graceful shutdown, we don't want to kill the request. Instead, we want to wait until the request is completed. So that's what we are going to do. So initially we just added a property, which is the graceful period, which is 25 seconds. So this is going to wait for 25 seconds and we have put a sleep of five seconds. So this particular request is going to take five seconds and then we are going to verify if the grace period has been triggered or not. So let's start this particular JVM. This is going to run on the port 8080. So I can directly hit my curl with 8080 and then I can call let's say hello right so this is going to take let's say five seconds to respond and then it will return a hello world message so just for the flexibility for us I'll add a log statement waiting for five seconds so this will be displayed inside our build logs here also I'll have a message saying returning 
hello world so that way we know that the five second timeout got expired so let me restart the jvm So right now the JVM is up. Let me go to the curl statement here and let me trigger this. So here in the log, we should be getting waiting for five seconds. And after five seconds, we should be getting returning hello. World. So this works perfectly fine. Now we want to make sure that we kill the JVM within the five second time limit. So I'm just going to quickly do a curl and let me trigger the stop statement. So the moment I trigger the stop statement, if you notice, there were some logs. Let me close this, let me close this. So there were some logs which said that commencing the graceful shutdown, allowing up to zero seconds for the active request to complete. Let me verify what is the uh, grace period 25. I think we did not mention S here. That was a typo. So let me do that and then let me restart it. So that's a classic mistake we all do. And in fact, I did as well now. So let me restart the JVM. Now let me do a curl again. I'll do a clear here. I'll trigger the hello. Now our period got started. So waiting for five seconds. Let me trigger the stop button. The moment I click on the stop or this is basically killing the JVM, right? So the moment I killed the JVM, I got an error message or a log message saying commencing the graceful shutdown, allowing up to 25 seconds for active request to complete. So this is logged by the hook inside the Tomcat which Spring Boot has configured. So we configured 25 seconds, so we are getting it. Let me make this as 30 seconds so that we can see if it gets updated. And also notice that after we got the returning hello world, the shutdown got completed. Now, in order to verify that, what we can do is we can configure a at pre-destroy. So at pre-destroy is a hook which we can leverage to see when our destroy method got called. So let's say, let's call this as destroy. So this will be called when the shutdown is completed and the control will be triggered to this destroy method, which is the pre-destroy. So when it, when this particular log is printed, we are done with the processing. And after that, we should get our message here. So let me add some message here. Triggered pre-destroy. So let me start it and then do the same drill what we did we also changed it to 30 seconds so we wanted to see if the configuration got updated and also we wanted to see if the destroy method is getting called so let me do a curl again quickly and then come here and then immediately stop the jvm so we got our message so we got the message now let's check if it is 30 seconds yeah it is 30 seconds so the configuration is getting updated and also we got a returning hello world and whatever log we added it is all coming after the grateful shutdown complete. So this grateful shutdown complete is a checkpoint which is checking if the sh if the Tomcat is ready to shut down the instance because all the requests has been processed and then it just comes to the pre-destroy. Pre so that's where we have added our log message. Now this sounds fairly straightforward if you are processing anything without any thread. So if you have just REST endpoint based Spring Boot application, this, this all just works fine. However, imagine that based on a REST endpoint, you're triggering a thread. Let's say I have a thread pool. Because most of the time we work with Spring Boot application, which is not just a microservice. Instead, it's a monolith because I've seen a lot of people doing that. So I'll configure the thread pool size as 10. And I need to type cast it to the thread pool executor. So I have a thread pool, which is just an executor, which has 10 threads in it. Now I'm going to use one of it here. So instead of the thread dot sleep, I'm going to use the thread dot sleep inside a child thread. So I'm going to execute a thread. Now I'm going to use a new runnable interface to call the thread dot sleep and move it inside this particular thread. So basically using a rest endpoint, I'm just not going to get any response. Instead, I'm just triggering another thread within that. So this could be used as a trigger. So most of the time what we do, we have a rest endpoint, which can just trigger some batch or trigger something within a Spring Boot application, right? So that's when we get into a mess. So for that, we are going to use this kind of an example where we trigger hello internally, it's going to trigger some thread, which is going to sleep. So this will mimic 
business processing system which is taking more than five seconds so that's what is going to happen and here we are going to say completed five seconds that way we know this child thread has completed its processing now in order to first test it without any failure let's do the usual grind let me start the spring boot application and once it is up i'll just trigger my curl endpoint to see what's happening now i can do the same so if you look at it hello world comes immediately but however our completed five seconds is going to come only after five seconds so that's what we got here so this came only after five seconds now if we destroy our application within the five seconds now what happens is will this splint the completed five seconds or not so if you guys are interested in a quick quiz just pause the video and then reply to me in the comment section what happens when i kill the jvm when the request has been triggered and within the five seconds if i kill the jvm will this particular jvm wait for the child thread to execute and then complete or not just let me know in the comment section let me go to the terminal let me trigger the curl and i'm going to just stop it now if you look at it how many of you were right it did not even print the completed five seconds because there was no way for the jvm or the tomcat to know that there is some child thread which was running so we will have to configure it in a way that the tomcat knows or the jvm shutdown hook knows right so one common way of doing it is you can have a shutdown hook and then in the shutdown hook you can test it instead you can leverage the pre-deploy section here so the solution for that would be i can still leverage the same executor to check if there is any active thread count so i can just do this right i mean if the active thread count is greater than zero i will have to wait now imagine i can wait for five more seconds right so imagine the thread did not get destroyed i can wait for five more seconds now let me surround this with a try catch and since this is going to be like a loop i can wrap this into a while loop and then completed i can in fact use this log statement here to show that it got triggered and then we can use completed all active threads now let me run this particular code let's see if it works so what we had done here is we are using the same executor to identify if there are any active threads these are the child threads if there are any then please wait for five more seconds and then do your job so that's what we are doing here now let me go to the terminal trigger this curl and immediately i come back and then stop this now what happened is it has triggered the pre-destroy and then it's just waiting for five seconds and then it said completed five seconds and then finally it said completed all active threads that's what we had here so this is one neater way of checking if all the threads which were present inside this particular executor if they were active or not imagine if you have a spring boot application which behaves like a monolith and you want to have it gracefully shut down then you will have to do something similar you cannot rely only on the tomcat to identify and then trigger your graceful shutdown period instead you will have to do additional step of doing this so adding only this particular configuration doesn't help you in any way instead you should also have some way for you to identify if other processing within your application is ready for shutdown or not so this is one example of how you can leverage executors and if you are using executors with thread pools then you can use it to identify if there are any active threads and then gracefully shut down your application so if there are any other custom queuing mechanism or custom queues and threads which you are leveraging within your application you can plug that inside this section itself so you can configure the act pre destroy annotation and just override the destroy method and then just go ahead and configure whatever you want i hope you found this particular feature interesting do let me know if you're using this feature already or if you have any complicated use case which you would like me to try and then resolve it for you 
as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much